a little bit. All right, so a virus. Well, so we just finished um, classification and we covered every kingdom. Was virus part of them? No. Why? Because it's a non-living. Who knows why? Because not Nope. Bacteria doesn't have a nucleus. So they they need to what? Attached to what? A whole cell. Why? Why? Why can't they just reproduce? Because they don't have a cell. They are not a cell. And we know that one of the seven characteristics of living things says you must be composed of at least one cell. Now, a virus can reproduce. A virus can uh, transfer energy. A virus can evolve and adapt and change and respond to stimuli. So it basically can do almost everything a living thing can do, except it doesn't have a cell, OK? So it's not living. So how do you kill something that's not living? You don't. Yeah. And what do you think about the structures? This is what viruses look like. What do they look like to you? Robots. Robots, right? So when you do your animation, keep that in mind. Because you're gonna, your animation is, I am a virus. So your virus, somebody's actually going to make one. I'm going to be the virus, which is kind of like a little depressing, yeah. So I am, yeah. But I think that's cool. Like I told you, I had a football helmet virus. So be creative. All right, so the structure. You should know this already from all the presentations or from just looking at the picture and recognizing it based on what you've, you've seen before. What it, we're going to start with this. What is this? How do you know it's RNA? It's inside. It's inside. It looks like something, and it's what? The center. It's single-stranded, okay? But the reality is a virus can have RNA or DNA. So remember that nucleic acid is, is the building block, right? Nucleotides, whatever. So we are referencing either RNA or DNA. I'll, I'll go back in a minute. What are these structures that surround my virus? Protein. The capsid layer is, is also known as the protein coat. And then this is the part that a lot of you didn't realize. Surrounding is a layer. What do we know forms layers? In, huh? No, cytoplasm doesn't form layers. All right, so I'm gonna, do we recall back when we were studying like compounds, forms layers? What, what's your? Lay, your, your outer layer of your cell made up of? Lipids. lipids, good. So lipids was the one thing. Now, if you missed to talk about this in class because they had just done it, so it was like me repeating. A virus reproduces two ways. This is showing you all of them, and then none of you told me what the name of a virus reproduction cycle is called. So one is called lysogenic, and the other one's called lytic. This picture right here, if I look at this, this, and right here, this is similar for both, yes? The first part. A virus can go from this point straight to this point, which would be this cycle, okay? Or a virus can do all of this and then somehow end up doing all of this. So it went through both cycles. Or it could just stay here for a long time. So I'm going to start by talking about this one first, which is the lytic cycle. And, and if anything, I'll, instead of showing you the animations I have here, I'll show you the one my student made. So a lytic cycle is basically, in a nutshell, when a virus reproduces and kills the whole cell at the end. That's what it's, what's happening during that cycle. Now let's look at the pictures and try to describe each step. This should be down here a little bit. So what happens first? A virus attaches. So before, we call this the absorption phase, a virus attaches to the whole cell or binds to the whole cell. And just put a little star here. The virus actually has to find the whole cell first. 
A virus is specifically linked to a specific type of cell. So in other words, there's specific types of virus that only can attach to specific types of cells. Can they change and mutate and evolve? Of course, we, we see this all the time. But they're generally looking for a specific cell. So a virus has to find the whole cell and then it attaches and binds to the cell. Then what happens next? Good, we call that entry. It inserts its nucleic acid or injects its DNA into the whole cell. So if you need to rewrite that sentence correctly or make sense of inserts NA, the virus inserts its nucleic acid into the whole cell. Yes, it inserts RNA or DNA. The reason I'm putting nucleic acid is because I'm doing general overview of virus rep replication and some viruses can have DNA and some viruses can have RNA. Once it inserts its DNA, what starts to happen? There is no, it, it can go to the nucleus, but look at this picture. It starts to replicate, okay? Virus parts are made. It uses the nucleus information. It, it kind of confuses the cell and says, hey, DNA, make more parts because that's what DNA does, instructs the cell, right? So it does incorporate itself into the DNA to manipulate the cell. And think about it. What are virus parts again? Name them. Protein. Lipids and, and nucleic acids. Do we not have those three things? Yes. Isn't it easy for our cell to get confused and think, hey, that's my stuff? No, it's not. Because it's the same chemicals. In this picture, I was showing you RNA replicating, but what ends up having happening is, whoops, parts are made. So it's, and I said that in the notes, virus parts are made. So we're, when we talk about virus parts, we're talking about protein and lipids, right? And nucleic acid. So those are the parts that are being made. And then in the last, or, or almost the last phase, what happens? They assemble. So the virus parts assemble into a, a, a virus. So you take the protein, the nucleic acid, and you just make a virus. If I was just going to give you this picture on the test and you had to describe it, you would say the cell is, is coming apart. And that's what the virus does. We call it release. And during the release phase, the virus actually makes a chemical and it causes the cell to burst, and then the virus are set free. How many do we have now? So from one we made four, and that's just this particular one. It could be from one we make seven. And what are those four gonna do? They're gonna look for a whole cell to what? Attach, enter, reproduce, assemble, release a chemical, and get out, and go look for more. I'm sure one would have to win over the other. Now, this question always comes up. What happens to that little virus? Yeah? What happens to your cell? What's this made up of? Proteins and lipids. What's your cell made up of? Proteins, lipids. Chompy S, your body absorbs it. It's no longer a virus. It's no longer a cell. It's chemicals. Yeah? The other thing that can happen when a virus enters or finds a whole cell. So the first thing is what? Absorption. It finds the whole cell and it absorbs or binds itself to the cell, outer portion of the cell. And then entry, which is inserting its nucleic acid. And then what happens? This picture is different. Correct. The virus becomes part of the whole cell's DNA. It literally warps itself in there, and that automatically is considered taking over the cell because this information is no longer correct. This information has been, yeah, sabotaged. So we're going to call this, just to remember, viral slash host 
DNA because it's no longer your DNA. It's no longer viral DNA. It's like a combination. Yes. When a uh, virus enters the lysogenic state or cycle, it's almost like the virus is dormant. It's still going to cause damage, and I'm going to show you why. But it's, it's not making virus parts. A virus, and I showed you this before, can go from the lysogenic state, which is right here. What happened to my mouse? Right here into the lytic state because something will trigger it. It's, it's been kind of said that HIV can be in the lysogenic state for 10 years in your body. We figured out a way to obviously keep it there for, for as long as possible. But if, if HIV enters the lytic state, then AIDS would happen. Yes? Or, or the likelihood of AIDS happening is more. Now, when a virus enters the dormant phase, what happens to the cell constantly in your body? It splits. So now we don't have one cell with a piece of a virus into the DNA. We have two. And we know when a DNA is, is wrong, what happens to your cell? Or what could be a complication from this? Cancer. So when you guys were doing your projects, cancer was a complication for pretty much all of them. Maybe not yours so much because our body can combat it. But the, the ones that require a lot of medicine can lead to that. And keep in mind, like I said a little while ago, at some point, the DNA in this cell can become active or wake up or exit the dormant phase and enter the lytic cycle. Enters your cell. When the virus is floating around your body, even if it hasn't found a whole cell, our body should fight it. When it enters the cell and it incorporates itself into the DNA, the lysosome should get rid of it. So there's signs of defense. They're just sometimes too sneaky. Yeah? How does a virus end up causing symptoms or, or diseases or sickness is the question. And three like factors come into play. What are they? Daniel. So, like, if you kill off a cell, it's supposed to perform a certain job. It's not going to be done. So, we're going to say if we kill off a cell or our, how well we can fight it. Like, if our body kills off the cell or if our body kills off the virus potential, I'm going to say. What else? What is the first thing a virus struggles with? Finding itself. So how fast it could find a site to attach. What else does a virus have to struggle with? When a virus finds your cell, what is, it, what is its whole goal? Reproduce. To reproduce. So it depends on how fast it can reproduce and mutate. Because sometimes our body will fight it, but it will still figure out a way to survive and still cause the damage by changing its... I guess it's genetic makeup. 